Hey everybody, it's me, Penguin. Welcome to the kitchen. I'm just bringing you guys along for a little informal cook with me, making dinner for tonight. It is 9.04 on a Sunday night. I hope everybody had a great weekend, a great start to the fall. So I'm gonna dump my potatoes in the pan here and get them cooking a little bit and get my bowl set off to the side. I've got some um, bell peppers here and I've got some onions here that I'll be adding to them, but I don't want to add them right now because I don't want them to darken up. So I'm just gonna let this sit and cook here for a little bit. I had bought this about a month ago because we really like taking these pizza kits and making them our own. I could make homemade pizza dough, but I really like the taste of the crust that comes in these. So it also comes with sauce and Parmesan cheese, but I'm not going to be using that. I'm only going to be using the crust packets out of that. I'm not quite ready to do that yet, but I will here shortly. And yes, in case you haven't figured it out already, we're going to be making breakfast pizza. You remember I made the video on making my evaporated milk and water gravy, and I said I needed that gravy. That's what that's going to be for, because we're going to be putting together our favorite breakfast pizza. So, I'm still waiting on the potatoes to get done. Um, I need to do um, a couple of other things after that, and then we'll get ready to do the crust. But I'll bring you back here in just another minute. Okay, basically what we're making in here is Potatoes O'Brien. And I know that you can buy them in a bag at Walmart. I think they're like $1.68, $1.78, something like that. But it's just cheaper if you buy a whole 10-pound bag of potatoes. You could make this several times on your own and save a lot of money. So... Next thing I'm going to do is dump in my bell peppers, get all that in there, and then I'm going to dump in my onions, and I'm just going to give this a mix around, because the potatoes are just about done, and I don't want my vegetables getting too overdone. I want some color left in those peppers. So as soon as they're done, I'll be back. We're going to take those out of here, put them in a bowl, and then start something else. Okay, there's our Potatoes O'Brien all done out of the pan. You can see I didn't cook the peppers as long because I wanted them to stay vibrant and the onions are translucent. Okay, now it's time to scramble some eggs. So I've got four eggs here and I've got a little butter and I've got a little milk. So I'm going to get to whipping these eggs up in a bowl. Okay, I've got a couple of tablespoons of butter melting over here. I've got my four eggs in here because that should be all we'll need for the scrambled eggs for a breakfast pizza i'm going to throw in just a splash of milk i like to do that because to me it makes the eggs a little bit fluffier and yes i'm going to put in some a little bit of pepper now i always wait and add the salt for later because to me the salt makes the eggs a little bit hard and not as fluffy so i'm not going to add the salt in just yet I did add a little bit of onion powder though, and I'm going to give these a nice whisk up. The more you whisk them, the more air gets into them, and the fluffier your scrambled eggs will be. So I like to give them a good, a good mix up, either with a whisk or a fork, whatever you have on hand. Like I said, the more you beat them, the more air gets into your eggs. And to me, the more fluffier the scrambled eggs you have. Now, another thing that we use on our breakfast pizza, um, you can either take bacon out and fry it and do all that stuff. But we like to use this. This is real bacon. It's already bacon crumbles, if you can see through the little window. We like these on pizza. Um, and not only that, but for this, 2.5 ounces is only $1.23 or $1.28. So this is perfect for omelets, for breakfast pizzas, even regular pizzas when you like bacon on them. Just anything like that. And again, it's just, it's real bacon. It's not like the imitation bacon like the Bacos. This is real bacon. Alright, so our, our butter's pretty much melted in here. So I'm just going to spread it around a little bit. Make sure it's the pan's all covered with that yummy butter got my frying pan on low right now so I'm just gonna go ahead and dump in my eggs 
and I like to let them sit for just a little bit. I love this thing because it's like having one of those, um, you know, your rubber, your rubber spatulas. This does the same thing, plus it scoops. It's great for getting everything out of the bowl. All right, you see how clean that bowl is? These things, I got it from Walmart, is awesome. So if you get to Walmart and you have a chance to, I'd pick up one or two of these because they're absolutely great. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this up a little bit now. My electric skillet on 350. I like to just let it sit for just a couple of minutes before I start tossing it around. Because again, I, I think it's, if you start mixing them up as soon as you put them in the pan, you lose a lot of that air. So I'm just going to let them sit here for a minute and then we'll get to tossing them. Okay, now what I do when I make my scrambled eggs is I'll go in and I'll just gently pick some up and I'll flip it. I just flip it over real lightly. And you can tell there's still a lot of runny in here, but I just like to gently flip over. You know, just like when you're making some icings and some cakes, it tells you to fold. That's basically what I'm doing with my eggs. Is I'm just kind of like folding everything gently over. Have you ever like put a bunch of eggs in a bowl and scrambled them and you made scrambled eggs and you're like, you don't end up getting that much out of it. And you're like, what happened to all my eggs? I put like a dozen eggs in here and I've got like a cup of scrambled eggs. And I think that's because there's just not enough air gets into it and they don't have a chance to get that fluffiness so again I'm just picking them up and lightly lightly tossing them over and just give them a little a little break up just like that and now since they're halfway or more done I'm going to go ahead and just sprinkle with a little salt. And I'll put some more salt on here in just a minute. Again, I'm just going to give them a light little flip. I don't know if you can see. Do you see how, without losing any, do you see how thick that egg is? It just gives it a lot more volume to your eggs. I'm just gonna break them up a little bit. Just gonna let them sit in here for another minute and then I'm gonna take them out and transfer them to a bowl. And then we'll get started on our crust. So I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, I got my electric skillet put away, so now I'm going to open up my box of pizza kit mix. And if you guys have never bought these before, they're really, really good. Inside, you get a big can of pizza sauce, because one of these will make two, probably 12 to 14 inch pizzas, depending on how you want to make it and how you like it. So... Well, apparently they've changed them. They used to add, they used to give you a packet of Parmesan cheese in them, along with the sauce, but apparently they don't do that now. So, anyway, we'll just keep this and we'll use this for a pizza that we make later on. So, because we're going to be making a big pizza, I'm going to go ahead and use both of these packages. And to these packages... You're going to want to add one and a third cups water. If you're only using one package and making one pizza, then obviously you're only going to want to use two thirds of a cup of water. But we're going to be making a big one, so we're going to use both packages. Okay, I've got one and a third cups of very warm water in here, so now I'm just going to go through and I'm going to mix this up. I will end up getting in here with my hands, but my hands are clean. And also, you're going to want a little bit of oil because once we get it all mixed up, we're going to want to drizzle a little bit of oil over it and get it turned around in the pan. So, I'm just going to go in with my hands and toss it around a little bit. Make sure everything gets good and mixed up. This is just an easy, shortcut way of getting your pizza dough done without having to foo-foo with it. 
So I've got the oven preheating to 400 degrees if I didn't say that already. Just gonna take my dough and kind of work it into a little ball here. Just like this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of oil in the bottom of my pan and the bottom of my bowl and turn it around. Flip it over and do the same thing. Just give it a little drizzle. Okay. So I'm just gonna cover this with a towel and I'm gonna let this sit here. It's already kind of warm in here. I'm gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes and when it's done, we'll be back. Okay guys, I have my big pizza pan out here and yes, it's been around the block a whole lot. But I know I could take an SOS pad and scrub it clean, but to me that's just seasoning, so. This is what we're going to be making our pizza on. Yeah, for a quarter, that was well worth that. We got that in the yard sale a long time ago. Yeah, so I've got my pizza dough in here, and it's rose a little bit. With this, with this kind of dough, it doesn't rise a lot like it would when you're making a traditional pizza crust, but we're just going to stretch it out here. I just let it dangle by hand. So I can get it a, a decent size so that way I don't have to manually spread it out too much. It's very elastic, which is what we like. We want a good elastic dough. So I'm just going to lay this on here and just gently pull it to my corners. Because what I'm going to do is because we're going to be putting a lot of stuff on here. I'm going to pre-bake this crust for just a little bit. Not very long, just about five minutes or so. Okay, if you can see that, I've got it all spread out there now. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get this in the oven. Again, I'm gonna pre-bake it just for about five minutes or so. I'll keep an eye on it until I think it looks the way I want it to look. And then I'll take it out. So we'll be back in a few minutes. Okay guys, now comes the fun part. We've got our crust. It was in there for just about seven minutes, just to give it a little bit of substance. Um, we don't want our crust to be soggy, so that's why I kind of pre-bake it a little bit. So another thing that we have for this is we buy this breakfast blend at Myers. I think you can get it just about anywhere, but it's sharp cheddar and Swiss cheese. It's great on this pizza. So here is my gravy that I had left over from the gravy that I made. And this is what we're going to be using for our sauce for our pizza. So I'm just putting down a generous amount of gravy and this already has sausage in it. So this of course is part of our breakfast theme for our pizza. I'm gonna spread all this out here. I think you guys can pretty much see all of it, what I'm doing here. All right. So we've got a good amount of sausage gravy over there for the base of our pizza. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some bacon crumbles. And we're going to crumble this. We're just going to sprinkle this all over our sausage gravy. And now comes the hash browns. Yes. What breakfast is breakfast without hash browns? You got to have some type of potato. All right. I think that's good. And we've still got a lot of potato left, so I will put that in a bowl. And we'll put that in our refrigerator and have that for dinner tomorrow with something or lunch with something. Okay, and now comes our scrambled eggs. Yes, have to have some scrambled eggs on a breakfast pizza. I'm not a big breakfast person, but I do like breakfast pizza. All right. Can you guys see that so far? Whew. Heavy, heavy pizza. Wipe my hands off here. Now you can also, if you want, you can take a 
a bottle of your favorite Louisiana hot sauce or whatever hot sauce you like and do you some dash of the hot sauce around or if there's something else you want to add on here by all means add it on but we like just these we've got our peppers our onions our potatoes sausage gravy eggs and now time for the cheese All right, I think that'll do it. Can you guys see that? See all that? Okay, I'm gonna take this over, I'm gonna get this in the oven, and I'm probably gonna bake it about 20 minutes, uh, between 15 and 20 minutes. I'll keep an eye on it. I want my crust to get a little golden brown, and of course we like our cheese to be browned a little bit on the top. So when it's all done and I take it out, I'll bring you guys back. Hey guys, there's the pizza hot out of the oven so we're gonna let it sit and cool down for a little bit and while they are while it's cooling down we're gonna try these for you guys because what is a pizza without breadsticks so we're gonna try these new mini cine sticks so let me get the can open and we'll start putting those on the pan and we'll give them a try for you guys too so we'll be right back Okay, it says to put the cine sticks on a, a grease sheet, so we're going to use our butter spray and spray our pan a little bit. And we're going to open the can and hope it doesn't pop and scare the bejesus out of us, but it probably will. And no, it didn't. It didn't pop. So here we go. So this is what they look like inside the can, just like any other, any other roll of dough or biscuits or anything like that. Comes with your icing, cinnamon icing in the end right here. So we're going to get these out. It says to divide them into 24 mini cine sticks. So I'm going to find the end of the seam here and I'm just going to roll them out just like this you guys can see gonna roll them out just like that and then we're gonna go along and I'm just gonna break them off and divide them because that's what it says to do divide them and See what it says for baking time. It says separate dough into 24 sticks, place half inch apart on greased cookie sheet, and bake for 11 or 13, 11 to 13 minutes until golden brown, and then spread with icing. So I'm gonna finish getting these spread out. I've got my oven preheated to 350, and when they're done, I'll bring you back. Okay guys, you can see that makes a lot of cine sticks, and these were on sale, the cans too, for $3. So we only bought one, but for $1.50, that's a lot of cine sticks. So I'm gonna get these in the oven. Okay guys, there you have it. Here is our breakfast pizza and the mini cine sticks. As Chef always says in our videos, that's what's for dinner. So we're gonna give it a try. Or at least I'm gonna give it a try. Chef's fixing himself something to drink. Yeah. So, here's my piece of pizza. The crust, if you can see on the bottom, perfect. So, time for the taste. Mmm, 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 mmm. If you guys have never made yourself a breakfast pizza, the next time you make biscuits and gravy and you have leftover gravy, I highly recommend you make one of these or do like I did and make the sausage gravy a day ahead just for the sole purpose of making this. You've got your sausage gravy, which has so much flavor. You've got your potatoes O'Brien, your scrambled eggs, and that good cheese on top. And bacon. And bacon crumbles. This is really, really good, guys. Highly, highly recommend 
you making yourself a good breakfast pizza. This is something that's great for Christmas morning, Thanksgiving morning, Halloween, or like us, just a nighttime snack. You've got your pizza and you got your breadsticks. And in our case, it's breakfast pizza and cine sticks. So that's it for the video, guys. I'm going to go ahead and go now so I can eat my dinner. And we will see you guys shortly in another video. Night, guys. Everybody have a great night. Night, night. Bye, guys.